Sunny none of what you hear But I can't help but be confused Do you plan to tell me, dear? Cause if you plan to let me go For the other gal you love before You know I heard it through the grapevine Not much longer would you be I'm a sculptor. I, I have been for years, my whole life. I have some photos. My husband is showing up any minute with a few of my sculptures. Okay, cool. One that's at the Loring Elementary School in Sudbury. I also did the sculpture in front of the Goodnell Library in Sudbury. And I did the gorilla at the Franklin Park Zoo. And I don't think I put Children's Hospital up here, but I did a life-size piece for them. And I'm doing the sculpture for, Brimmer and Ma for um, Brigham and Women's and um, Hospital for their new NICU um, building. And I, I have a studio called Sudbury Art Studios. It's a um, sole proprietor. And um, I teach art and I do art all the time. First I made a small gorilla, which is called a Marquette. A lot of the times if I do a big piece, especially a public piece, I do a small piece first, and that's called Marquette. So I did a small Marquette, and then just kind of visualized and, um, the size from the small one. I didn't do the point system or measuring or anything, but um, I used the pink insulation that you put in ceilings of basements that you buy in Ho Home Depot, and it's all, it was all layered together all the way to the, it was inside the clay. This was now bronze. This was made from a rubber mold and from a wax. And it was a 30 piece mold. People sometimes think, oh, sculptors who do bronze, they pour the bronze over the clay, but no, no, no. They, there is a mold process, a mold making process where a mold is made of the clay sculpture. This has been going on back since Michelangelo, Degas, Matisse, everybody did this. If you look it up, it's very ancient, which is another thing I really like about sculpture, that it's so ancient. I'm not a big fan of um, technology, although I do use it because it's practical. But um, anyway, then after I had the pink foam over it, the pink, that layer foam, I remember thinking, this is going to be a gorilla, this, these sheets of pink foam, but I knew it would be. I took something called plaster lath, and it's something you put on walls for plaster, and I cut it with shears and gloves, and I made staples out of welding rods, and I would take a welding rod and make a little loop like that, and stick it in the pink foam so that the plaster lath would stay on the pink foam, so that the clay would have a way of staying on the um, foam, and creating the sculpture. And then I took slabs of clay. I took a clay wire, I took 25 pound bags of clay, and I would make a slice, and I would kind of like slam it on there. It was sort of fun. And um, also it was fun, I have a picture somewhere else of me up on a ladder on the top. And it was just, I like climbing and everything, so it was a lot of fun. This I did for the new Franklin Park Zoo um, Children's um, Zoo, and it's called Nature's Neighborhood. And now the Goodnell Library wants me to do this kind of tile project for them to raise money. It's a great way to raise money. Um, for the zoo, where it was Nature's Neighborhood, they gave me a list of animals they wanted to have painted. And I created the tiles, even I'm late here because I was creating tiles for um, the Goodnell Library. The, the woman who's in charge, Samantha, wants them ready tomorrow to be painted for their party so that they can show examples that they could have a nice tile of something 
and then have their name on it. And it's so much nicer than bricks, you know, hand-painted tile. They can even pick the subject matter. It could be book-related. This was all animal-related. Are they in relief? No. No, they're not in relief. They're just painted with special paint. That, that, oh, uh-oh. Oh, darling. Well, this is known as the Porter Garden Telescope. It was designed in the 20s by a gentleman named Russell Porter at MIT. He also worked at a machine tool company in Vermont. He was an artist, a visionary, and he loved looking up. He designed this for fun. It's a reflecting telescope, but you're used to a tube. The tube has turned into a sculpture relief, so you see the optics that are normally hidden in that tube. They come out in seconds, leaving you with a sculpture and a working sundial. My father saw it in the Smithsonian and then pursued it at another museum. It landed in the Smithsonian because it was the model for the 200 inch at Palomar in San Diego and gained some notoriety as a result. My dad saw it and spent 40 years pursuing it and finally secured the opportunity to resurrect it. We've put in superior optics that they didn't have in the 1920s and other functionality and we're making it in a limited edition of 200. We're here tonight uh, showing it, and any resultant commerce will trigger a $5,000 donation to Elm Bank. It's a reflecting telescope, just like the one in a plastic tube that you're used to seeing. Um, what's different about this is that you see the optics because they're all exposed, and they come out in seconds, like that. And this comes out, and then you're left with Art Nouveau Botanical Bronze that is a centerpiece in a garden, a mystery, and a bit of a delight for guests. The first question is, gosh, it's beautiful, what is it? And you say it's sculpture and a working sundial. You point this at the sun, if this is pointed to north, and you get the time on a marker here, and you have to do the work to get the time. So it's a proactive sundial. Then you bring out this optics case, pop in the optics and take them to the moon, Jupiter, Saturn, and uh, surprise people. The optics are very, very good. Designed by two gents who do military satellite work at Lincoln Labs outside of Boston. Uh, there are two eyepieces, 75 and 50 power. The 50 power tends to stay in the box. People always want more, so the 75 is the one that gets the most views. Well, so here is two of a pair. Um, la uh, our having customers laugh, learn, and dream is the goal, and uh, promoting women in science is also part of our mission. Uh, I, my husband's a scientist, and I'm an artist and a gardener. Um, so he requested a painting, and I realized that. Uh, female scientists aren't as recognizable facially as like Einstein so it, it started the ball rolling for to prepare so I've got uh, Marie Curie 
and then uh, Rosalind Franklin. Those are the two I'm focusing on right now. Marie Curie, she discovered radiation and plat and radium. And ra radium and there's another plutonium. No, no, she isolated radium. Isolated. And discovered or first observed radiation. And first observed radiation. Uh, she died from her research, which is kind of sad. And her daughter continued it through science and helped publicize her work as well. She won two Nobel Prizes in two different fields. If we were over there, I could... It's chemistry and physics, right? One in chemistry and one in physics. Yeah, one in chemistry and one in physics. No man has done this. No other person. She's the only person. I mean, she was the first female to ever win a Nobel Prize, but I don't think that's as cool as saying you're the only person to win two Nobel Prizes. Two different fields, too. And two different fields, yeah. <laughs> so there's like people that have won uh, the Nobel Peace Prize and a Nobel, but I don't know, right? So um, my goal is to make people laugh, and as well as dream, so we've got some strange imagery of things in the galaxy. and. And my demographic is women in science, so I'm trying to appeal to them. Um, I have cards for birthdays, cards for uh, weddings, a lot of <laughs> wedding cards, because I myself have friends that are getting married and I need a cool, personable card that's different. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm doing some photoshopping. If you say you want your father to be floating in space, I'd do that for you. <laughs> so this is me floating in space. That's my artwork behind it, but yeah. So um, if you just find me on my Etsy page, it's two of a pair um, at Etsy.com. That and uh, so inside the card it says, "Hope your birthday is out of this world." <laughs> I call these garden gongs. They're um, technically they're called bell plates for musicians, but I uh, I grind art into them with a angle grinder. Um, so I grind these images into them. You can put them out in your yard, yeah, and they're made from aluminum, so they don't they don't rust. And I'll I'll hit one of them for you so you can hear what they sound like. So I was a construction worker previously in my life, and uh, I went to graduate school for music. I'm also a musician, and I took a welding class when I was in graduate school, and um, the gentleman who taught the class uh, told me I had to make art, and I, I can't draw a stick figure. And so that was about nine years ago, and slowly over time I just started making different things, and this has been about two years that I've been making these. So, uh, last summer I made these chimes um, for Wheezy's Garden for Children, um, and it plays a major scale as you go all the way around the around the tree for the kids to play. And and these gongs are uh, available at um, the Clever Hand Gallery in in uh, Wellesley, Massachusetts.